Well, one thing about Suki's storyline, I was really, I felt a little gypped not being able to see them escape from the bar when everybody was turning from last week, but I'll let it go. The main thing is, is that what is Suki? I don't know because I don't read the books. And honestly, I don't like spoilers, so I haven't bothered to investigate it. But I am curious to find out what is Suki. Because, again, she, like, uses her powers to, like, get somebody off of her. That's what she did to Marianne last season. And, again, the person, well, Marianne was laughing. It happened to her. But Russell starts laughing, and even though it hasn't happened to him, she zapped Cooter off of her. Um, I don't know. I want to know, and I'm tired of people laughing about it. I want somebody to explain it. And I loved how she was taking off her nail polish. I knew she probably could not wait to get that nail polish off. And I'll see it has a lot of plaid, a lot of flannel. Last week he was rocking the flannel bathrobe. This time he's ro rocking the plaid lumberjack shirt. So that's it for Suki Sterling. We just got to find out what's going on with her and her powers. And I think it'll be interesting. Well, Bill wasn't having too great a time himself. Franklin has shown up with the goods for Russell, and he's got Bill's Sookie folder, which Russell confronts him with, and Bill's like, you know, I don't know what that is. I don't know what you're talking about. And Russell is like, you know, I, you know what this is. You know, I think you're trying to find out something about Sookie and about her powers and how it can help you. So Bill's just like, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. So he also, while he's there, you know, Eric shows up at Russell's castle, plantation, I don't know what you call it, but he, Eric shows up and Bill has a chance to confront him about the V and about the selling of the V. So that was like a little short thing, but the big thing was that he now knew that Russell knew about his folder. So... Bill's sitting there trying to figure that out when Cooter busts into the room and starts talking trash about Suki and Alcy. Bill flips out, beats him up, and the bodyguard, which I thought was kind of funny. If I was a vampire, I wouldn't have a vampire bodyguard because Bill was able to lay him out by, you know, they're susceptible to the same thing you're susceptible to, so, I mean, having the wolves watch over you is a good idea, but... Anyway, Bill beats the bodyguard down and Cooter down and then escapes to go and try to help Sookie. But I mentioned how that went down previously to this. So, again, we'll have to see what happens next week. Lafayette did not have a lot going on this week. And I think I've seen that top before. So, we need a new outfit for Lafayette. Uh, but... I did enjoy him and, you know, the beginning of the relationship with Jesus, who was his mom's nurse, at the hospital. So it'll be interesting to see where this goes. How could I not talk about Franklin? I thought he was just going to have these weird eccentricities that was going to make him, you know, strange but still cool. And it just turns out he's just absolutely serial killer crazy. And that's unfortunate because I don't want... I don't want his storyline to end, but I don't want to see him turn Tara into a vampire either. So it's going to be really interesting to see what happens with this because, like I said, I don't want him to leave, but he's he is, like, really crazy. So I wish he was more of just a general henchman or something and not so wrapped up in a main, with a main character. So I, we have to wait and see next week if he turns Tara into his vampire bride. Now, poor Eric. I mean, he got no help from Russell. And I mean no help. Russell was just like, you know, whatever, we'll get to it. Um, it was pretty sad because, you know, I hate to say it, but they're burning daylight. Literally, daylight is going to be burning pretty soon on Pam if he doesn't get some help. So... I felt kind of bad for him because it was literally up until like the end of us seeing Eric in the episode that he was getting no help from Russell. But Talbot, who was all over him, shows him, you know, more of the collection in the house. And Eric gets to see this crown that his father had. His whole family was massacred by a wolf and then a cloaked figure, which may or may not have been Russell at this point. I couldn't tell from the voice. 
But obviously, it's somebody Russell knows, and if it's a vampire, they're probably still alive. So, I personally think that Eric is going to use Talbot to find out more about that crown. Because Talbot's all over him. So, I think it's going to be interesting to see, and I'm wondering if Talbot is going to, like, give in, or would he betray Russell? But I don't think Eric would play it like that. I think he would just seduce him. Like, I seriously don't see Eric being above that, not for a second, to get what he wants. And I really think he will try to use that to find out more about this crown and more about Russell. Well, Jason now has a job as the um, town's official police car washer. And that was good for him. Uh, Andy was really smart to just give him a job to get him out of his hair. I mean, Jason, how long I wanted, I really wanted Andy to say after Jason was like flipping out that little montage of him working in the office and Jason saying he couldn't take that anymore. I just really expected Andy to say, you've only been out here 10 minutes, which was probably how long that was. He was out there 10 minutes, but he gets, he gives Jason some busy work to do washing the cars. And he sees that girl that he saw in the woods before. It turns out her name is Crystal. And so he follows her talks to her, gets her to come to Merlot, she does, and they have this whole thing in the woods. And honestly, I, my mind was completely wandering during that entire scene. I don't care. I'm really tired of everybody meeting up with some sort of freak of nature. I think it would be interesting to just have Eric have a regular girlfriend. Either somebody smarter than him, that would actually be kind of interesting, um, or as dumb as he is, that would be interesting too. But she doesn't have to be a shapeshifter shifter, uh, warlock, hedgehog, like, I mean, just a regular girl, I think would actually be interesting. It really would. So as far as that goes, though, I think Andy was lying about the test. I think he told Eric that he needed to take the test because he knows Eric will never take a test. He'll know he ne he'll never study for it. I really think Andy made that part up just to get rid of Eric. I really do. So, that was smart on Andy's part. Jessica was not cool this week. Don't mess with somebody else's money. Hopefully, that's the only couple that she told not to tip Arlene. But, that was not cool. Hoyt coming in with his little girlfriend um, was hilarious. Because, you know, he spent the entire evening staring at Jessica. And you can hear that girl. He was staring at Jessica and you can just hear her talking and talking to Hoyt about her babies and how many babies she wants to have. And only in a couple of years. That was really funny. So we'll see what happens with them. I'm wondering if Jessica and then Sam's half-brother, whatever, are going to get together. I'm wondering how that's going to work. I think that's going to happen. Last but not least is Sam. I am convinced that Sam's family is, they are just a bunch of grifters. And this is all an act like uh, Sam's father, not Sam's father, but I can't think of his brother's name now. But him asking Sam if he could stay over his house because they're always so crazy at home. And then to prove the craziness at home, the dad shows up and is ranting and raving and screaming. I just think this is seriously all an act. And what's going to happen is that they're going to get his brother to ask Sam for something, a lot more money, just something so he can get away from his family. And then they're all going to like, we're going to see a scene with all of them splitting up the money or something. So I just really think this is all a lie. And I hope Sam finds that out sooner rather than later. Outfit of the episode is always hard when there's no Pam in the episode, but I'm going to pick uh, Tara's Vampire Bride outfit because it reminded me of the Vampire Bride dress from Bram Stoker's Dracula. So Tara gets outfit of the episode this week.